Berger Chevrolet has been family owned and operated since 1925. We support our community because we are our community. For nearly 100 years, Berger Chevrolet has been dedicated to supporting small businesses, nonprofits, and charities in our community. Through our Berger Gives Back campaign, our employees have raised awareness, provided funding for programs that give back, and supported locally owned businesses. We are proud to partner with Fox 17 to sponsor We're Open West Michigan. Learn more at BergerChevy.com. All right, ever want to just get away <laughs> to a tropical space, sipping on a Mai Tai, enjoying some great food too? Okay. Well, you don't need a plane ticket, Todd. Okay. Just head to downtown Grand Rapids. That's what I did. That's where you're going to find a destination location. Folks all over the country, all over the world are coming to see this place. Join us as we visit Max's South Seas Hideaway. What is Tiki? It started as a restaurant in Southern California in 1933 called Don the Beachcomber. And then Trader Vic's opened soon thereafter and those two were the competing Tiki bars and they opened various other locations. And it became really a Southern California invention that exploded throughout the 1950s and 60s to all over America, including bowling alleys, apartment complexes, movie theaters that were tiki themed, and of course, restaurants. And then it kind of um, really died out in the 70s and 80s. And uh, there's been now a strong, very strong resurgence in the past 15, 20 years. Well, tiki culture is people that love artwork. As you can see in here, there's a lot of interesting artwork, and um, it's also a mix of people that like to dress up in Hawaiian shirts or dresses um, and kind of pretend that they're having an island escape, even though they're in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The whole goal that we have at Max's is to make people feel like there is no outside world, like you're walking into an alternate reality where you forget the outside even exists. So in February or December in, in Michigan when it's cold and nasty outside, you just forget about all that when you're in here. It's warm and it's always twilight, it's always happy hour. Uh, being 52 years old, I grew up as a kid in the 70s, and you know Brady Bunch, Gilligan's Island, Magnum PI, Hawaii Five-O. I grew up middle class. I didn't. My parents didn't have money to travel to Hawaii, so it always seemed like such an exotic thing. And I saw it on TV, and Brady Bunch kids went there, and that was my favorite episode. You know, it just kind of was somewhere down in my psyche that you know I love that kind of Polynesian escapism. And as I, you know, developed a career as a restaurant and bar owner. I said to myself, so one, someday I'm gonna start a tiki bar. All the stuff that's on the walls um, is from my personal collection. And I've been doing, collecting it for years, going to tiki bars all over the world, not just California, but in Paris and Australia and London and um, all over the United States. And so I, I kind of had a mental database of what I wanted it to look like. And I had the, the artifacts and the artwork. A lot of the artwork and artifacts in here are vintage from old Trader Vic's, Down the Beachcomber, Kona Kai, um, Kon Tiki, old chains of tiki bars that used to be uh, popular in the 50s and 60s. And most of those are now gone, but the, some, of the art, some of the artifacts got salvaged. And I'm talking about wood carvings. So if you walk around the place, you'll see a lot of carvings. And that's kind of the classic tiki thing, is wood, wood carvings in a kind of a Polynesian style. The most famous piece that we have in here is the Konakai Philadelphia um, frigate bird, which was a giant 10-foot tall um, bird statue that was sat on the above the entrance to the Konakai Philadelphia from 1955 to 1982 when the place was torn down and there was a collector of that kind of you know uh, vintage tiki stuff that happened to live in Philadelphia and bribed the foreman at the construction site hundred dollars to be able to take some of the artifacts well, they were just going to destroy everything and um, he salvaged that bird and then I was able to purchase it from him many, many years later. When you come in, you kind of have to look around closely. And in fact, you usually have to come in several times to kind of catch everything. There's so many little knickknacks here, but one thing up there in the rafters, 
of one of the huts is uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. So when I was designing this place, I wanted there to be a lot of little separate cubby holes and little areas that groups could um, could kind of, again, this is kind of an escape from reality here, right? So that's why these cubby holes and these, what we call huts, are for small groups of, you know, four to eight people um, who want just a very private experience and yet they're within a restaurant that has a hundred and some people. Our best selling drinks are the painkiller, um, which is kind of a coconut based um, rum drink, and then the Mai Tai, which has more of a sour, um, almost a sour sweet mixture. Uh, so our most popular dish is the poo poo platter, which has crab rangoons and um, egg rolls and some other things on it, uh, ribs. And um, we also sell a lot of fish here. So we have a lot of seafood items. Um, and then crab rangoons, just as a side item, is a very popular dish. Uh, but our, our menu is, is um, Polynesian, Asian, American mix. Okay, because that's what tiki is. There's also a little bit of Caribbean in there. And tiki is a mixture of all those things. It's an invention of the United States, and um, the, the tiki bar is. It, it draws from different influences, and so that's what our food menu has as well. I get asked who Max is a lot, uh, because obviously my name's not Max, it's Mark. Um, I have a business partner named Martin, um, so there's no Max that owns this place, but there is a Max that is a regular here and he's the most interesting man in the world. Um, he usually has just left when you sit down for a drink yourself and no one's ever really met him, but he's a man of mystery and he inspired the vibe of this place. <laughs> the man of mystery. Will we ever meet Max? <laughs> hey, I'm telling you what, you go to restaurants that are decorated, that's one thing. This isn't that. This is a completely leaving West Michigan experience. experience. Yeah, yeah, when you go there. It's amazing. Max's South Seas Hideaway. If you love tiki or maybe you just want to experience it, check it out at maxstiki.com. You can check out their menu and maybe get yourself a reservation. The way he was describing all the food and stuff, I love every single one of those things. Uh, one of my favorite things Mark said was, oh, and here's the wall of 500 of my favorite tiki dolls. <laughs> that I mean, are his. The man has uh, hundreds and hundreds. This is all his stuff. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Can't wait to check it out.